Hello everybody, this is the Shuttlecast. My name's Josiah, and I'm joined here with uh, Nathan mm. and uh, Sal. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Strength mm. is dead. Yeah. One of um, us is a Kong. <laughs> one of us is a one of us is a Kiko. Um, we're gonna talk about it. Um, so today um, we are we are doing something very special. Very yeah. special. Uh, you see, um, in our ongoing uh, scattershot approach to uh, basically doing everything. Uh, Kaiju, tokusatsu, and uh, all all that weeb stuff, you know. Yeah. It's not anime. All the weeb stuff that is not animated. Yeah, if you, call, if you call yourself a weeb and you just watch anime, you're fake and gay. You're fake so, and yeah. gay. It's, it's, yeah. um, if you're a weeb, you don't know who Ultraman is. So yeah. walk off the bridge. So um, a while ago, Nathan and I recorded a joke. recorded a um, Godzilla. We were we were going through the films. And we were going through, and each episode was by era, which was very stressful because the show era had like 30 films, so yeah. we're not doing that this time. And I figured, because we've done that, Sal would be great as the new for this That's podcast. Right. Hi, right. I'm the new person. So how many... So Okay, we'll, you, want, you want mine? We'll ask in a, we'll ask in a sec, okay. so just basically to give people a rundown. We're, we decided for the overall context, rather than do Godzilla... King Kong and Gamera, we're gonna do kind of the history of kaiju. Yeah. Um, as like this all encompassing thing. And we'll talk about the goal is two films per recording, and then maybe four, depending on the show, five episodes per yeah. show. Um, but Sal, since you are the noob, would you like to uh, say, you know, basically what your experience is with these, uh, these various uh, kaiju properties? I saw Atlantic Rim. Is that? Oh, Ooh. I forgot to add that one. Thank you for reminding me. You're so welcome. Yeah, don't, don't you Atlantic, worry. I'm making a note right now. <laughs> yeah. Atlantic uh, Rim. Yeah, I mean, I, as, when I was younger, definitely watched the original Gojira. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. but of like, course. But so long ago that it does not m maintain in my brain space. Naturally. Um, of course, I watched the, the Topolis Godzilla. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which you, which you did join us on uh, our watch through. I did. Last time. Yes. yes. When Nathan and I, I I love it. Because it's great. It's so much fun until Jurassic Park all of a sudden starts playing. Yeah. Um, I watched the new, um, what's his fucking name? Gareth Edwards. Yeah, Gareth Edwards. Yeah. I almost said Robert Robert Eckers, and I was like, oh, that'd be, that'd be cool, too. Uh, no, he needs to do, um, Nathan will get this, he'll get this, and he needs to do the Matango remake. Get Robert Eggers to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That or uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is like, yeah, I, feel, I feel like it's in that weird, like, not quite kaiju film, but kind of a kaiju film. So, just for some terminology, because I actually looked this up. Yeah. It's ambiguous. I kind of, The way I kind of view it is like, and we'll talk about it today with Son of Kong, but Kiko... Uh, is like twelve feet tall. Yeah. So I think like the line I believe is like if it's over ten foot, it's a kaiju. Yeah. If it's under ten foot, it's a kaijin. Oh. Okay. So it's like human sized creatures. Okay. What if it changes size, a la, uh, you know, uh, like Reader Repulsa, maybe Mil Monster Mil Pro. I think, in that scenario, I, I'm not an expert, but I would I would just classify it under kaiju. Yeah. But uh, it's just because it, you know. Yeah, I think if you can get to kaiju size. You're a kaiju. You're a kaiju. All right, yeah. All right. yeah. It is kind of a casual term, but just just yeah. so you know, if I yes. reference kaiju, okay, that's what I'm referring to. It's a human size. But so that'll be on the test. We want to yes. we want to specify that this is uh, kaiju, not kaiju. Oh yes, right. that's which is what we are. Because I just rewatched. Um, <laughs> I just watched the first dress. three Fast and Furious films. I'm just so happy so. I got that. That's what you were watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. Um, all American Godzillas, basically. I love the Gareth Edwards ones. Mm. Um, I watched. Uh, I probably watched King Kong when I was a kid, but it's Kong Skull Island. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Peter Jackson King Kong. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Classic. Amazing. Um, I'm really excited to get to that. We just yes. got had a lot to get through. First. I know. It's, it, that's the reward, though. That's the light end of the tunnel. Well, it's funny whenever you'll. I mean, on the Google sheet, which I'll which I'll link wherever we post this, uh, you, you'll see like there's moments of like crisis, and I'm like, oh, here's this relief that we. Can. <laughs> And then uh, uh, Kong versus Godzilla or whatever the order was of that. 
Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, please. It, is the original is King Kong versus Godzilla, and the new one is called Godzilla versus Kong. Okay. Which is nice because that That's was... I was going to confuse. That was a tradition where, like, in the old Godzilla films, they would switch the names so that it wasn't the same exact yeah. title. It's like, yeah. That's, that's very, nice. very clever. And then further from that, I mean, yeah, Pacific Rim. I mean, I know I made the joke, mm-hmm. Pacific Rim. And then um, Ultraman, in terms of, like, kaiju stuff. Yeah. I like counts. Ultraman. Yeah. And I don't know if you can classify Common Rider in this, but <laughs> it I, is tokusatsu adjacent. From what I understand is it's not technically... Ultraman is considered a kaiju, a series with kaiju in it, yeah. but overall, Kamen Rider, as far as I looked up, which isn't much, it is not tech. It's a tokusatsu, but not technically kaiju. Just Kamen Rider J. Right. Well, I, I you know I don't know, so I need to do more research. He's the one that gets big. Oh, okay. oh I see. Good. I see. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. I did for one. I don't know why. It's just a random one in the middle. Yeah, hey, you know. That's hey, you know, Power Rangers is kind of kaiju. Yeah. No, that yeah. counts. Hundred percent. Definitely. So counts. I'm very much. I've watched a bit. But I'm definitely not as ingratiated as other people. Yeah. Sure. But a fair amount. Yeah. 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 So uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think. I mean, here's the thing. It's been years now, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to say that I've seen all the Godzilla movies at least once. There might be one or two floating around in there, so, except for the anime films. Well, well, that's that's uh, what I'm saying. Is as far as I'm aware, you and I have watched every. Film because I found some shorts we didn't see. Sure, but we we saw every films besides the second and third anime movie, which I, we just gave up on. I was I was a little saddened with um with our last like watch because I think I think we did watch through a bunch of them in high school, but it wasn't like any sort of official like retrospective. No, no, no. But I was a little sad for the, our our latest one. I I purchased this very very nice very expensive. Uh, uh, criterion collection of like Ooh. the first 15 Godzilla films yeah, but of sure, course yeah. um, you know Criterion is a very very classy very uh, artistic studio that wants to respect the source material so we don't get any of the fun dubs which was half the fun of Godzilla for me <laughs> back in the day see uh, it was it was interesting because in, in the last one we started we tried to watch the sub for the specifically the show era yeah we were basically saying like hey like this was back in the day when when the Western dubs would be made, they would often not try to make it. Yes. Any 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 kind of dramatic, they would just not care. Like this is just a dumb. So you know how it was with the original '80s anime dubs. They they didn't try. Oh you yeah, know. absolutely. It's like but ghost stories. It is like that's different. <laughs> ghost no ghost stories is a treasure. That's a, <laughs> no, that's a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, but because we are we are doing this now, uh, now that you kind of know our credentials. Uh, I'm definitely the baby here. Yeah. Which is, which is the idea. Which is what's going to be, I, uh, gonna be I'm, so this, fun. I'm experiencing a lot of this for the very first time. Like, I'm very ingratiated with, like, American kaiju shit. Yeah. Cloverfield. Like, Cloverfield, Monster, like, that kind of stuff. But getting into this is going to be a lot of fun. And we watched three things for this video recording podcast. Which was the third one? Um... The Peter Jackson spider recreation. So did you watch this, Nathan? No. It was on the spreadsheet. I, well, okay. I, I did, <laughs> Sorry. I, that was so, the way we okay, so, so, so we said King Kong. So, so okay. <laughs> listen. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it and we can watch it later. It's, it's all right. It's not, it's, not, it's not too crazy. It's not too crazy. All right, all right. However, the and I watched the lore video you, you tagged as well. Yeah. So we will talk about that, too. Yeah. Uh, mm. The thing is, is that... Um, the. <sighs> It's a rule that we're going to hold to about 95% of the time, but this time around we're going to make sure to go like as much as possible order of release. Yeah. There's a few films that came out within like a month of each other that for whatever reason I'll just it doesn't really matter, but per year we're going to try to stay like so we can cuz the whole idea is that we can kind of go through and see the full evolution yeah. from 1933 <laughs> all the way to yeah. 2023, you know. It's, Kind of crazy to think yeah. about. A um, hundred years. <laughs> Fuck. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. yeah. Ninety. Well, it's it's ninety. So so but, oh, this year. This, wait. But by the end of it. Yeah, but by, yeah. by the time we're done, it'll be hundred years. By the time years. we're done, it'll be a hundred years. Yeah, right. in ten years when we're done the retrospective, it'll be a hundred years. Exactly. So so it is crazy to think that Kong is ninety years old. It's crazy. The both of them because they came oh. out in 90, 1933, Both of them. Yeah, yeah it's very interesting. Because um, I always. Uh, like in my head, I'm always like, "Oh yeah, you have King Kong and Godzilla came out around the same time." It's like, no, 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 no. Godz- uh, King Kong could drink by the time Gojira came out. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, if you could, 
If he could. Or his son. But he, he's dead. He only gets drunk in, uh, in the, in the, uh, the Toho stuff. The Japanese stuff Kong gets drunk. We're, we'll get back. I vaguely remember that. But... Yeah. I really want Japanese Kong to be like a drunken master. Well, <laughs> I will drunken s- monkey fest. Drunken I will say monkey. there's there is some to my memory there is there's a, a key component of this film that they try to bring over as much as possible in King Kong versus Godzilla mm-hmm. um, that I did not expect at all. And it's it's very it's very good. It's a nice nice way of in which film? Sorry. So so uh, there's something very. Uh, key to the original King Kong that they try to bring up because obviously it's not the same studio or creative team yeah. doing King mm-hmm. Kong versus Godzilla but there's like a core element of King Kong the OG wait it's not one guy with one vision for 90 years I fucking wish no, that'd be cool he's just in a vat George he's Miller. Like, yeah he's, he's <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> have him rip the dinosaur's jaw off so here, here's here's the funny thing though is that unlike Godzilla which stayed with the same company up until 98 and then later with the monster verse is the only time that godzilla has been i'll say on loan yeah king kong on the other hand what's really weird is i look this up is, is that it, technically is there he, was is he a little slut well so <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it more but marion c cooper the guy who created king kong he's the co-director and the producer and i believe he co-wrote this. Wasn't that Carl Denham who made King Kong? Yes, well <laughs> technically they're the same person, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, he wrote a novelization What? that came out in 32. Do you have to read this? And the 32 novelization is public domain. Oh, the, shut the fuck up. Oh, really? no. The film isn't. So, the rights to King Kong are like a mess, so there are like certain films and certain things that kind of get around it if they say they're adapting the novelization. So, but also different That's people slutty. different people get Kong over the years, so it's quite the opposite. And even though King Kong is like from the Japanese side, they like revere it so much. Well they didn't like, stay with the same company. That's that's an interesting thing I discovered, um, not to go on too much of a rabbit trail, but I'm wanting to uh, on my own I've kind of been working on going through the the Living Dead franchise, mm-hmm. official Ooh. and unofficial. Um, and the thing about uh, the original Night of the Living Dead. Um, yeah, I know what this mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So, so 1968 was the last year where this was a thing. But prior to 1969, if your movie, like in the film itself, if it didn't say anywhere in the film in the credits that it was copyrighted, then it was public domain. Mm-hmm. Like even if you actually did file well, stuff, yeah. if it was released and none of the footage showed copyrighted public domain so i could see it being just a wild west before then yeah (laughs) with film rights but because no one cared it was like it was a wild wild west frontier of like people just making shit up and yeah yeah oh yeah especially italy oh yeah especially (laughs) hey you're welcome exactly listen i didn't say it was bad things like any westerns (laughs) having having done having gone through westerns uh the the uh the craziness of the Django property in terms of how many people have ripped that off is just absolutely insane to me. Yeah. But um, anyway, Marion C. Cooper, you mentioned earlier, didn't Carl Denham make King Kong? Well, the funny thing is, is that Marion C. Cooper basically is Carl Denham. Yeah. So Marion C. Cooper, he used to be in the military. He made documentaries all over the world. Mm. He's a really, really kind of interesting guy. Um, but it is, and I want to talk about this more, is that um, a lot of people talk about King Kong, this original, as being a B-movie, and that is completely not true. Yeah. Dude, this movie looked expensive. This this movie, for its time, was like a, a blockbuster. This thing was insane. Like, this thing had, had yes, it's to our mind, it, because it spawns so many, it's a creature feature. But back in the day, people took this, like, very seriously. Yeah. To them, this was, like, a really, like, unsettling, like masterfully you know it, and i will say i mean it's start to dip into the conversation yeah it is unsettling even today yeah i was i was gonna say i feel like this is probably the oldest film that you could like still show to a, a casual audience and like not have too much of like a, um you know cultural divide or, or sure. like taken out of it because i would um, say maybe this and then the same year dracula yes 
But if you go much earlier, then you start dipping into like silent film. Like I think, yeah, um, it's a harder sell. Yeah, like I think I think the first film uh, to have like dialogue spoken was it was the jazz singer. And mm -hmm. It was either nineteen twenty five or nineteen twenty six, and even yeah. then, it was it was just it was still a silent film, just with. I think it was like eight lines of dialogue yeah. that they dubbed in for the whole film. Yeah, it used to be so, much more expensive. Yeah, so yeah. this was still like really new. But I want to I want to say that ahead of time is that in its cult in its cultural context of the time, this was not like you know when you go to the fifties. Eventually, we had these like uh, films that were considered B movies, like them or uh, whatever that giant ant movie is, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and all these other things. But at the time, this was considered like. A, a basically what Carl Denham is known for in the film is like this guy is like very well regarded yeah. and very well known yeah um, would you consider Eight Legged Freaks a kaiju movie Alien Freaks no Eight Legged Freaks oh yeah that's okay, a kaiju cool. I've seen that yeah. I've seen that <gasps> maybe, maybe we should Adam. if you want me to <laughs> <laughs> it keeps growing <laughs> All right, we're we're just, just like kaiju you know? yeah see yeah. so yeah so we'll do Eight Legged like, <laughs> Legged freaks, correct. And then I have to add the um, Monster Island with Eric Roberts, which was ripping off. Oh God! Uh, yeah. the 2019. Yeah, the, the you know, if you see Eric Roberts in a movie, it's gonna be really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. But so Stand let's true. let's kind of get into it. There's not many people who are unfamiliar with what King Kong is. It's, it's a classic story now. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is that in my research, the producers kept trying to tell Marion C. Cooper. You need to start with Kong. You need to show Kong right from the start. And he was no. like, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, 100%. Like, the anticipation is so great. Yeah. Like, both probably when it came out and also now, because now looking back, it's like, oh, I can't wait really for the effects. How bad are they? And then you get there and you're like, this is kind of unsettling, actually. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And this is a bit more than what I expected, honestly. Mm hmm. When I went to this mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. So we, we start with this really gorgeous overture music and I kind of miss overtures I do too uh, anytime I get one in a movie I'm like oh this, hey, like, this is fun here's a little here's a little medley okay. I skipped it uh, I thought about it but then I like <laughs> was looking around and I was like the whole thing is like an hour and a half I can see yes. through a couple I was squeezing in before bedtime so I was like I'm just gonna I was too but I I watched the I watched King Kong in two parts so I, I, took, I, I, done that, I took a little honestly. intermission we anyway. list the we list the players <laughs> as opposed this. to the yeah. cast. Um, we get we get all these characters, and um, then we get this this thing that is brought back in a later incarnation. But we get the the fictional Arabian proverb, which says, "And lo, the beast looked upon the face of beauty, and it stayed its hand from killing, and from that day it was as one dead." Basically, you know, telling you what the movie is going to be about. Ahead yeah, of time. which is nice. That is that is yeah. good. Yeah, you start off your thesis statement. And <laughs> yeah, so, yeah it's, it's very well realized. And, um, and it's, it was cool going back to this because it had been so long and me being more familiar with, like, say, the Jackson version. Is that you're right at the boat. Uh, that was shocking. Because, again, I, I've probably seen the Jackson one a few times. Yeah. So starting at the boat, I was like, oh, Jesus, fuck. They're like, yeah, so Carl Denham, you know, he's going to go with the phone song. You're like, <sighs> I, I will say... Just in retrospect, this movie made me appreciate the Peter Jackson one even more, mm -hmm. just with how how close it does follow. And there's like... Chose not to modernize it. Chose not to modernize it, but also yeah. did in some parts, because, uh, you know, spoilers for, for 2005 Kong. Um, I think one of the funny things is a lot of the dialogue on the boat in the original film mm -hmm. is used as dialogue for the film that they're filming in the Peter Jackson film. Yeah, so in, in Jackson's version, he he takes um, he takes Jack Driscoll, who's the first mate, Yeah, and then he, he makes him the writer, and then he kind of cuts the first mate character, and then and then has the actor Bruce, whoever, whoever, yeah. is the is the is kind of standing for old Jack Driscoll, um, which is you know it's it's very meta aware, which is nice. It is. Um, and then uh, <laughs> and we immediately get into the scene where Carl Denham's like on the ship. He's like, okay, 
<laughs> we, so, we need a woman. We need a, we need a woman. <laughs> we, need, we need a. This picture needs a woman. Everyone need keeps. A name. Everyone keeps telling me we need a romance, and it was really funny to me how it was like it's it's funny how nowadays we're like ah oh, they had to have a romance and then. Carl Denham's apparently the type where he's like, I don't understand why people need this. In the movie. Like ninety years ago, like in the uh, the the fresh booming days of the film industry, even then they were like, God, the producers want me to put in a fucking woman for a goddamn romance. I should make my my stupid monster movie. It's yeah, it, it's very uh, this this movie does a good job of straddling that line between overt sexism and also just <laughs> insider trading this is what filmmaking looked like at the time yeah well see i think this film i'm going to the streets and find some girl i think a lot of people look at this film and they they don't because they're coming to it from the point of view of it's a creature feature the start of the b movie mm. they don't actually analyze what it might actually be saying yeah so i think the the film has some really interesting things that we can talk about where it doesn't say anything outright, but Anne, when when Carl Denham finds her, she's very clearly like down on her luck, and she, when she kind of gets the hint that maybe um, Denham might be looking at her for like some lewd content, mm -hmm. she immediately like kind of freaks out. Yeah, and the film doesn't say anything, but I do find it interesting that in a way it's kind of commenting on. Even then, the way the industry took advantage of people. Yeah, Absolutely. totally. Because Anne is likable as a character because she basically has nothing. Like, this is her last chance without having to sell herself. Oh, yeah. well, she's all right. Well, <laughs> well and, then, and then, but, but she, she goes, all this, like, stuff happens to her that she didn't ask for. Yeah. And she doesn't know anything about. And then at the, she gets strung up as, like, the sacrifice. And then, in parallel, Kong is then made an actor in New York. He gets yeah. brought and basically is victimized by the entertainment industry. Strung up for sacrifice. Strung up for sacrifice to the voyeurs of the audience. So I do think like there's a deeper level this film is operating at that yeah. a lot of people don't give it credence because, oh, it's a giant monkey like running around. <laughs> ah, for sure. I, I think even the monkey takes like an hour to show up, which yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it takes that, about an hour. That's really good. I, I think that that is, um, I think it's also just down to the presentation because, mm -hmm. and this, this, this movie actually kind of made me want to explore this kind of genre, but like having a, having like a deep philosophical message to say, but presenting it in this like thirties, like, you know, like, you know, the old new cat newscaster announcements from the thirties mm -hmm. where it's like war in Europe and it's like like something like that where it's like and lo the beast behold the beauty and he mm -hmm. was as one dead and it's like you know where it's just like it in some ways it's very overt it, and yeah. it does still like it is still trying to say something deep but if you are just watching it on the surface level then it like you don't fully register all of it mm -hmm. almost. yeah there's definitely mm -hmm. things that they're like the message they're saying they're saying it both very overtly but like very like subtextually it's, it, it operates on both levels and of course you know like there's been people who have Read like, okay, is this saying, what is this saying about, because I mean, again, Marion C. Cooper went to other countries and filmed documentaries, and so is he making a commentary on colonialism or, um, uh, and again, I, I do, I do kind of like the read that he's talking about the entertainment industry and, yeah. and what we do to, what, what we'll put out of our minds in order to have a good time, so... But we, uh, you know, we, we start out, and, and Carl Denham, he, he's talking to Captain Englehorn on the, and, and Jack Driscoll on the venture, and they have apparently enough explosives to take out the harbor. Yeah. And they have gas bombs to, like, knock out elephants, and immediately you're like... Uh, what the? That, that, that Carl himself apparently invented, which is yes. like, my God, this is... Uh... Here's one thing I'll say, and again, I know we've all seen the Jackson version... Something that was interesting to me about this and then Son of Kong is that in a strange way, I think like Carl Denham is way more multi-layered in these films than he is later. I think they make him way too overtly malevolent yeah. or selfish. <laughs> yeah. Because like in this one, he's much more like confident. Like he stands up to the native chief. Like he tells everyone to calmly walk back to the boat. Like he's way more... Like in charge. In charge and sure of himself. And Whereas he... the new one's like, ah, Jack Black. 
And I and I liked his I liked I liked that version of the character. It was just interesting going back. You would think that the character would get more obviously selfish and evil, but it's quite the reverse. He's actually more uh, gray area where it's like, yeah, he's doing something very risky, but he's also not. He's not like. I guess the big example is like he's not like filming as they're like running or trying to deal with the problem. Yeah, you know he's not like oh make sure you get this shot. Of, and then we gotta survive and get the fuck out like of the island. He does that with the natives initially, but then that whole aspect never really like crops up. It's not like he's. Well, I would say that. I would I would say it's almost like they they combine his complaints about the film industry mm-hmm. to his own character yeah. where yeah. like the Jack Black version is this charming swindler yeah. you know who like doesn't want to go out of his way to hurt people but yeah is willing to exploit opportunities as they arise as you know most people do in the film yeah. industry I feel like what's, yeah. what, what it is is that OG King Kong is him talking about himself. Yeah. Whereas Jackson's Kong is is kind of talking about a caricature of that. He's talking at the time, you know. Well, because in not to jump ahead, but in Jackson's Kong, they reference Marion C. Cooper as being the guy who took. Uh, they say like, "Oh, she's with RKO." He's like Cooper, huh? I might have known. <laughs> it's like a little way of like saying like he exists in the world. But, yeah, that's funny. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and he goes and he he finds Anne, brings her back to the boat. And, and whole... she's definitely not stealing. And like, no. I was like, oh, you're stealing that. It's like she literally she, was just looking she, at she it. She just grabbed it and yeah. was looking at like n- made no attempt to walk away or pocket yeah. it or. She could have been like, hey, I'm gonna buy this but, after that, but no. But we only got an hour and a half. We gotta. We gotta, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta hurry up. All right, move. And she comes back to the boat and. Um, then the whole kind of arc with Jack Driscoll and her is that... Or um, it's the classic movie thing yeah. of, ah, oh, misogyny is so hot. God, he hates women. Well, it's just funny to me because, like, another reason I like Anne is that she stands up for herself and she uh, she kind of takes it in stride. She's like, yeah, I know, how this is how it's going to be on the boat. But she's still, like, needling him because she knows that, like, he feels something, but he's not admitting it. Because he's a man. Well, yeah, because he's a man. He's a man, a sa- and you're a woman. And he's a sailor, and you're a woman. And... Uh, dame on my boat, bad luck. <laughs> yeah. That's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. She does write that perfect line of being like, oh, I'm trying to stay out of the way, but also, what am I doing? And then just him being like, oh, just in general. It's like, it's okay. It's yeah. Dick. It's like, yeah, woman, yeah. 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 Um, There's men on this boat. I also really liked um, when... When uh, when Carl Denham is directing her and shooting on the boat, mm-hmm. it again kind of gave me that that insider look of because it would I assume he's what he's filming would most likely be like a silent film or something. And having now watched yeah. a lot of them, I've definitely seen a lot of shots where it's like, oh, so the actor was just told to look freaked out and maybe they rolled on it for too long because mm-hmm. you just have the expression of horror for. Like too long, but he's luckily like making her. Faye, Faye Ray is such a good actress because yeah. in those scenes where he's directing her, she's very. You can clearly differentiate when she's acting and when she's not. Yeah, um, yeah. Because in, I mean, in the in the movie, I always love this when actors have to act bad because mm-hmm. they're an actor or they're a bad actor in a movie. Yeah, uh, Barry. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, yeah, her like doing the over exaggerated like ha ha, and then later on, now she's like. <laughs> like, yeah. Like this is now like this is clearly like you know her as an actor really acting. Yeah. But before she was like acting. I also like they they only did it very briefly, and I wish that they did it for longer. But he when he's like giving her direction, he's like yeah. look directly in the camera, and so she does in the camera that yeah. Like, it's like, that we're oh, saying, so yeah. if, so if, I wish it had gone on longer, where it's just the perspective, and we still get his direction. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. But they they do it a very little bit, but it was it was cool. They did. Yeah, it was for a moment. It was just for a moment. And um, let's not forget, we also introduced to my favorite character, Chinese cook. See, here's the funny thing. Who definitely does not have a name. No, but yeah, because in Son of Kong, he's one of the only returning characters, but they credit and he, him and as that, Chinese cook. Yeah, like, and like, his name's Charlie. His name's Charlie. Yeah. They say it multiple we times. We know his name. He's in the first movie. They say it multiple times. So it, it, it's so funny, but it is interesting. He he is the one who realizes that something goes wrong mm-hmm. when the natives get Anne. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm not messing with school. <laughs> I, I love Charlie. Charlie's a cool I character. Across both films, he's... He's great. 
Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll talk about him more with uh, with Son of Kong, but he he was a he was a fun character. They established the Beauty and the Beast illusion on the boat pretty early, um, and the and the movie kind of does a good job of going. Oh, oh what? Where are they going? Like. Oh, where, where, oh, Skull Island? What, what, what? So they, they really do a good job of... Imagine if you're watching this for the first time and you don't know... Let's say you haven't seen a poster, you don't know where it's going. You're like, I, I have no clue what's going to happen when they get yeah. there. What kind of a movie is this? You know, like. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder like, it'd be cool to go back in time and look at the, um, uh, the advertising for it and be like, did they... Were they showing off, like, what this was going to be? Oh, they had to. I mean, yeah, but... Yeah, had to. And um, when we get to the island, uh, there's like this big wall, and they imply that there was some, maybe the Egyptians, but an advanced civilization that built this and then left, and then, uh, and that the remains of the uh, the natives there are like the the dis- descendants descendants of the lost. You see, it's actually it was a it was a, it was a jail for um, um, creatures, mm-hmm. and they were locked in. <laughs> Well, because uh, I know my dad, when I was watching it and he came in, he was like, oh, why are the doors that big? And I was like, well, I mean, did the civilization take creatures out and take them elsewhere? Like, the film, that, again, this is one of those things where, like, if you look at it and you don't analyze it, you may say, like, oh, this is just, like, so that Kong can come through the doors. It's like, yeah. yes, but... Yes, but who built those doors? But who and, built them? And, and, and why? Did they transport creatures off the island elsewhere. Mm-hmm. See, I was more thrown off by, like, the the walls cut off, like, the last quarter of the island, maybe. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well... Like, obviously, like, this is the problem you run into with any wall on an island, but if I can see the edges, then I'm like, well, why doesn't it go around? <laughs> it go around? No, that's, quite, that's quite simple. But, well, as we know, in the Son of Kong, there's some tidal waves that happen. Well, we're going to talk about... Oh. I'm very confused about Son of Kong in some ways. Yeah. Me too. Um, I love that Anne is excited to see the native rituals, and she's just, like, <laughs> so excited to be on this adventure. Well, she's happy to be, like, fed and, like, have a, have a bed and, like, not be, like... Th- thieving and like selling her body for money i know but it it's it's more than that it's like she she's genuinely like a kind of a an innocent curious person i mean i'm sure she's lived her whole life in whatever city they were in yeah this is like amazing for her even when even the scene where the the chieftain is saying like we'll trade you four of our women for her she's just kind of like She's all excited. Like, what? She's like, well, this is insane. What's yeah. going on? Like, I mean, you have to imagine, you know, back then there's no, like, National Geographic probably. There's no, like, way of knowing what the outside world looks like. So, like... Mm-hmm. That's true. And, you know, she's surrounded by men. She'll be safe. Yeah. She has no... She has no, she has no expectation they're going to go through with the deal. But she's like, oh, what the... I'm like, what? What's going on? <laughs> That's you know? cool. Um, Captain Anglehorn speaks... Mo- the native language to an extent. He kind of knows it, which mm-hmm. was... Yeah. Which was cool. Interesting. I always appreciate that in a character where it's like, oh, it seems to have its roots in this language, which I know, mm-hmm. so I can kind of get around. It's, it's like, like, oh, it's like he's, like he's world traveled. He knows a lot of things. Yeah. He's like a character. Yeah, it works out. And so the natives get Anne, and they string her up <laughs> in the classic scene. <laughs> and it's great because she's screaming, and, and we finally see Kong. Oh, yeah, we And do. it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And then this is when the movie starts like really kicking into full gear. Oh, it doesn't admit, stop. I'll admit, yeah. like the first like part of the movie when they're on the boat getting there, kind of boring. Yeah. Kinda, I mean, mm-hmm. and of course it's you know ninety years old. Sensibilities have changed. Pacing's changed for me. Hearing old timey like voices and music, I get sleepy. It's that constant droning orchestral that I'm just kind of go. It's ah, nice, but like you know it's. And, kind of just, and also, it doesn't help that, like, I mean, for me, as, like, a modern, as a modern man, mm. um, <laughs> you know, there's, like, really heavy misogyny, which means it was just how the times were. I get it. But Jesus Christ, it is, like, every time, every time he says something, I'm like, God, this guy is, like, off the fucking it's, chain. He got, he got a stick up his ass. Yeah. This whole thing. And then we have the Chinese cook, who's not Chinese, of course. It's just some guy in makeup, obviously. Um, what is it? Yeah. Some dude named Sam or something. Some like hmm. white guy, yeah. That was pretty good makeup. I, I mean, couldn't, I'll I couldn't admit, tell. it was good makeup. I, at first I was like, oh, wow, they actually got like a Chinese person to be... Oh, wait, no, they didn't. Yeah. No, I, I have s- to make sure. And again, I've watched. A, I've now watched a lot of 
teens and 20s films and it gets a lot worse so yeah, yeah. that was that was pretty good and it's also funny because like you think about that right they, like, they have like a fake like asian character but the asians are the one that take this movie and go this genre is ours now <laughs> So it's kind of a fun, like, it's a karmic balance. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you'll find in some of the Godzilla films, the Japanese also, uh, in, in the... <laughs> Caricature. Uh, well, in the, the Germans, in the Frankenstein Conquers the World. Yeah. Uh, they, they, so what the fuck did you just say to me? You'll, you'll see. <laughs> Something it's really, wonderful. Something <laughs> wonderful. They go to, the, there's a bit where the sci- Japanese scientists go to Germany, and it's... Yeah, it's like okay, the same. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we also I don't want to um, spoil it. In, yeah. in, in a different film, and it's good, I don't remember, so I can't fully spoil it, but but we get an insight as to what... Oh, um, they think uh, San Francisco's like? No, what, um, what Japanese people involved in the media, their first contact with Native people yeah. is like... And it's uh, is it like Kimba the White Lion? Is it that good? <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> right. But it's very, it's it's very funny. It's very fun. It's very good satire. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what I was trying to say basically was that like the first part of the movie, I was present, but I was like pretty like, I was kind of dull. I mean, some of the the the, the themes are very obvious. It's not till later that it gets more like subtextual. I feel like, but I do, I did enjoy like talking about the movie industry and like yeah. we're kind of like satirizing that to a degree mm-hmm. which is fun to see like the movie industry so in, in its infant state already developing all these problems that are still around today and yeah. that were being satirized in the 30s mm-hmm. yeah. that in the 2020s is still happening it's just that's amazing to me that was that's fascinating yeah, yeah. yeah. but I think I like as a, as a character I connected to the captain and to Carl Denham a lot yeah. I felt like for me that the whole movie Anne was like not a very compelling character, not very interesting. But of course, like she's like a fucking street urchin just kind of coming along for the ride. It's not till like later when she gets like like once Kong happens that it's like she has a real like direct conflict to deal with. Because mm-hmm. until then she's kind of like I'm on this boat and there's this cute guy kind of being like you know like cold yeah. to me, but I know he wants me and like yeah. See, I think I, I hang I, out with the Chinese cook all day. See, see, I enjoyed her parts, but I do think that her and Jack's parts are pretty weak They're, because because, because you, they suddenly are just a thing. Exa- yeah, it's it's like sometime around when they get to the island, or maybe a little before, where he's, he like kind of you start getting the hint of like, oh, he's actually into her, and it's like, well, we haven't had enough like bonding scenes really but, but but how do you so I'm not saying that it couldn't be written better but Sal was just saying the boat stuff does go on a long time so if you add more scenes it doesn't really solve that problem it, it would just I don't know I understand that you could rewrite it a little bit I think it's I think it's there I think um, it just could have been like instead of him constantly kind of being like ah oh, there's a woman aboard and a woman are bad give me give me yeah. give me some montage baby yeah give me yeah. some montage and then like yeah. doing stuff on him yeah but you get a little montage bit wasn't with... invented yet <laughs> oh, you're right you get like he, I, I would say the most you get is the scene where he sees her acting and like when he yeah. hears her scream that's when he's like Oh, yeah. Like, hey, that was a good scene. That was like, a really that good whole scene. sequences. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the best part of yeah. the, the boat. Well, I'm glad I'm glad that you agree with that. Like, well, that and the Chinese cook, but yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but this film, let's just be clear, it's a, it's technically marvelous. Yes. Like what they were able to achieve at the time, um, and I know with Kong's close-ups, they use um, a very a puppet or animatronic. Yeah, and dude, not that, stop motion. That but. thing is he he um, had the funniest eyes. He looks a little bit like he's having a stroke every time you get the the close up on his face. The most impressive parts to me are when you're getting the stop motion juxtapositioned with the yeah. live action acting because that's when it's like that's that's crazy. Oh, wow. I have a favorite shot of the movie. Yeah. That we'll talk about when we get into the Iron Skull Island. Okay. But mm-hmm. I have a shot where I'm like, this shot is fucking peak. Yeah. I do like how Kong thanks the natives when he gets Anne. I don't know if you noticed that. He kind of is like. Like they're they're like cheering and he's like saying shit back to them. <laughs> I he's, didn't notice that. If oh. you if you pay attention, like he has Anne and he's like happy, but then like he acknowledges that them. He kind of like he kind of like makes noises at them, oh, and it's not yeah. and it's not like roars. He's not like upset. He's almost like thanking them. Yeah. Thanks. I wanted a blonde white woman. I appreciate. Yeah. It. He's like you, you tell me how you finally got. <laughs> oh my god! I've been asking you guys for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> but now that we're on Skull Island, yes, this part of the movie is amazing 
Yeah. It's very good. I, I woke up for this part of the film. This was outstanding. I think the moment, one of my favorite shots with the stop motion, it doesn't involve Kong actually, it's this bit where, and I love that even, I mean, at the time you could say that maybe, oh, well they didn't, they didn't know specifically, they had this, a bad view of how dinosaurs actually behave. But it's the shot where they come into the clearing and then you, they hear the sound and they're like, what the hell is that? Then you see the stegosaurus come in. You're like, oh, it's a stegosaurus. Well, that's like a that's like a herbivore. It's fine. Then just turns and goes, <laughs> and then charges. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and, like, <laughs> yeah. no, and no, that no. that that shook me. I was like, <gasps> I did not expect. I thought like uh, something else was gonna come in and like kill it and then come after them. No, fuck you. So when the stegosaurus charged and they were like they were like unloading on it and then and then then I was like, give me the gas bomb and he like throws it in its face and then it yeah, explodes. It, it was so awesome about <sighs> the sky on is that for the most part it like does not let you breathe for a fucking minute. Everything wants you dead. Yeah. yeah. Like the entire time. It's like every scene is, and you know, it's all probably budgetary reasons, but there's no there's no time to, like stop and like you know, really enjoy mm-hmm. the moment. Yeah. No, fuck you. The stegosaurus is coming right at you. We gotta <laughs> fucking go. That, that, that's probably my favorite shot though. That's when the gas bomb explodes and the stegosaurus like oh falls down and then it gets back up. I, yeah. I think I think especially with the I think it's the fact that like because of what we know now with with dinosaurs, like looking on it, like because it's like they're in the they're they're close up and it's in the like foreground, mm-hmm. so they see it. We're like, oh, it's a dinosaur, but they're immediately like, oh shit! And then as soon as it turns yeah. to them, they're like, it's charging, and then it, then it does its roar and everything. Yeah. And, and, we like, get, oh. and we get this amazing shot where they're walking besides mm-hmm. its yeah, corpse, yeah, yeah. and this movie. I know this was pre-code of Hollywood before like rating stuff came in. Yeah. Like, did they shoot it in the eye? Yeah. And just like blood spurts. I'm like, this movie is so violent. Like, yeah. Again, like this part of the film is like, this holds up. This yeah. part's fucking great. 100. percent Absolutely. Because every scene is like, hey, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. This island wants you dead. The, uh, the brontosaurus. Which is also heard before it goes and just eats people and yeah. pulls them out of trees. I'm like, this well, is. Well, because these are these are Skull Island dinosaurs. Yeah. they're a different breed. Yeah, yeah. they're all they evolve savage. differently. They're more savage than the savage time they came from. Yeah, yeah. it's like primal. You know? Yeah, everything here is demonic. It's like primal. Yeah, I Ooh. thought about adding that to the. I thought about adding primal to the. Yeah, yeah. He should do a Kong or Godzilla thing. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, he did zombie dinosaur, which was great. Oh, that's that's so scary. That's that's the scariest episode yeah. of the whole show. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. But then they eventually they kind of split up a bit, and like then I'm kind of get split off from the group because mm-hmm. he just gets stuck on some like stick. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty funny. I'm like, yeah. oh, did he die to get impaled? No, he's just kind of stuck. No, he's just no, he's just stuck. stuck. Okay. And then they run onto the bridge. Yeah. And then <laughs> in one of like, the scariest scenes of the fucking movie, like the guys are on the bridge and Kong comes up. And he grabs the bridge, and he's like trying to shake him off. Yeah. Have you guys seen Midsummer? Yes. Yeah. Remember the? Uh, that reminded me of the part of Midsummer where they, they fall. And they fall and they fucking. No, yeah. yeah. This movie is so violent. Like they're they're like skull crushing, no pun intended. Uh, like on the on the ravine floor. Like he's like just everyone's dying. Like they're just like, and I know it's just like, like rag, like rag dolls or whatever. But like it's still the the, the yeah. sound effect, the the whole I I feel like we've been like go, 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 crazy the whole time, and, like, just seeing these guys just, like, lifelessly fall from the the, the, the the tree stump and just fucking smack against the rocks or, like, hit multiple rocks and bounce and just, like... Rated G. They, they, didn't, they, didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have time for the, uh, the bug massacre. Uh, so we can talk about this now. So there's... But, the... just, but just to finish up, that oh, whole yes, sequence yes. of them, like, being shaken off, oh. falling... Like disgusting. Yeah. Like actually, yeah. like that's scary. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then, and then of course it follows up with with the, with my favorite shot of the movie, where um it's it's Driscoll right, and he's hiding in the in the cave. Yeah. And there's a creature coming up from the ravine, uh-huh. but also Kong does this like <gasps> this super <laughs> nice shot, dude. Kong fucking. I literally was like. so good yeah oh. that, that's my favorite shot it's just him like oh. <laughs> yeah 
He's just looking for him. He's going to down there. Yeah. It's like, for fuck's sake, give him a break. I'm calling that creature that um, climbs up a skull crawler just because it, uh, yeah. the, in the comics for Hawaiian, they're like two legged yeah. mm-hmm. serpent things, but that's what I call it. Yeah, thing. just, and so if Port Driscoll's like, oh. I got this fucking thing coming up here. I got this giant monkey, like, like, like 10 times speed trying to like search around for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was it was magnificent. It was magnificent, dude. Like that shot's gonna stick in my head for the rest of my life. It's so amazing. <laughs> I, I think it's also just because it is sped up stop motion, and the thing, uh, like you can it's really so frantic. It's so frantic, but also like always around his head. There's always just hair that's like shifting yeah, around like crazy. Like, See, I'm oh. really pissed that in um the Fellowship of the Ring, the Nazgul didn't just go underneath the burrow. <laughs> Oh god! Something, something that's very cool, um, and, and I only noticed it in the New York scenes. But when Kong's like up on the side of skyscrapers, they literally show the wind hitting his fur. Yeah, and that blew my mind. Yeah, that's I crazy. was like, you don't have crazy. to do that. Yeah, you <laughs> really didn't. There we are. Um, it's just so good. So yeah, Jack has okay, this so, so, skull curl. He cuts it yeah. loose and then it falls. Then Kong. Ah. <laughs> it's like, oh. I don't know if he actually makes those noises in the movie, no, but, he's doing, like, but in my grunts. head, he's, yeah. No, he's, he's um, doing the But in an alternate reality, do you want to talk about what happened? Yeah, so... In this scene? This is a controversial topic because there's a lot of misinformation about it. A lot of misinformation. Um, in the original script, uh, Marion C. Cooper had the bugs, like spiders and like creepy lizards, like that two-legged one, attack the, the crew down there, so I don't know if like... Yeah, so they like, like survived, like some of them survived the some fall. Some of them survived. Yeah, and then uh, Peter only Jackson. Only to be met with. <laughs> yeah, only to be met with the giant spiders, and well. so Peter Jackson actually created, like, recreated the whole sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only about three minutes, but mm-hmm. he uh, he put it on the um, the DVD, and you can actually watch it on YouTube. So I recommend Nathan that you. Yeah, it's really cool, um, and it looks st- same effects. Like it it lo- it looks like identical oh, to okay. the rest of the film. It's very impressive. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but it's controversial because a lot of people said they cut this scene and destroyed it because test audiences got scared. But if you look at like the filming schedule, it's like they never even shot yeah. it. They did some test like photos of them in the ravine, but they never shot it. So yeah, um, it, it's kind of some like a, a, a film myth that there's this lost spider sequence. It's like they never shot it. But yeah, it was in the script. They wanted to do it. I mean, this movie's so expensive. They just don't have time or money to do it. So they're yeah. like, well, it's like two, three minutes without Kong in the middle of the whole Kong sequence. Cut it. Yeah. Because it, it. it just it just keeps going. Like you get a little bit of a you get a little bit of a lull when they capture Kong yeah. and take him to New York, but it's not it's not that long. He no, breaks out very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a good it was a good call to not have that scene in there because it really just mm-hmm. focuses on Kong, keeps the pace up. But also, but for a, a film like uh, like King Kong, like with Jackson, mm-hmm. that scene makes more sense. Well, yeah, it's, I got a slower, it's, an, it's an epic. It's an epic. You know, he already has like, if you take the extended cut, you're, you're like in New York for an over an hour. Yeah, which before is crazy. they launch the boat. So yeah, yeah so true. this makes sense. But yeah. and then we get um, Kong fighting some something. It, it's not a T Rex. Yeah, because it has three fingers, and the script it just says meat eater. But uh, I know. Uh, Cooper said it's an Allosaurus, so did, fear not. They did not get this wrong. I, the like between between this movie and Son of Kong, these like fucking dinosaurs are dicks. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, they're evil. They, they, like they're evil. We'll get to, but like the one in Son of Kong that just walks right up to him and then immediately starts attacking. It's like <laughs> what the fuck. We get this famous fight, which has been referenced so many times, um, and yeah. we get Kong wrestling with. I, I think they did a good job of like. Showing how these two creatures would realistically fight. Yeah, it was a solid um, fight. Yeah, you know, Kong does like the 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 leg drag, and then eventually, of course, you get the iconic uh, uh, jaw crush. And the fact that it was in this, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. They they don't pull punches with this. Um, and so Kong takes Anne back to his secret lair, and we get this um, controversial at the time. I know when they re released this in thirty eight. They actually cut some of this, uh, where Kong like is undressing Anne a little bit, and and it's like, oh, <laughs> okay, this is nineteen thirty three bestiality, cool, yeah. cool. Uh, Size difference, plot, plot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What? Um, well, here. 
strike from the record. Um, there's trivia I was going to share that I discovered, but I uh, was. Uh, what about that scene? I don't know about animal anatomy. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, let's we're good. That that's one, that, that's a different show. Cut. Um, <clears throat> and then a pteranodon, like, I, I believe it's because, so, Kong gets attacked by some kind of, like, plesiosaur or something and tries to get Anne and he just, like, <laughs> beats it to death. Yeah. And then he takes her up there and I think Jack, like, knocks a rock down, like, and, and then Kong is like... <gasps> <laughs> and then he, and then he, and he's like, I know, I, know he's, I, know, I, I know I didn't get him in the ravines. And he goes back, and then Anne gets, like, snatched by a pteranodon real quick. And uh, and eventually, this is another one of my favorite shots of the movie, where eventually Jack sneaks up, and he and Anne start going down this vine. And then Kong finishes up, and he, he goes back, and he's like, oh, no, you don't. And he starts pulling them back Dude, up. Dude, that was so scary. Was and like, then uh, this was a shot of them falling into the water, and one of the two ragdolls gets way too close to the rock. And comes within like an inch yeah. of the rock. Yeah. It was like, yeah. oh no. Oh. Was that the best shot you guys got of that? You want to, one more time? All right. No, you gotta make it real scary. Yeah. And then again, Anne's just like, yeah, I'm all right. It's <laughs> Dude, one, one thing about the King Kong in this one is like, the, like, whoever made this movie had a definite fear of like, Falling from great heights, because mm-hmm. yes. there's so much fall falling yeah. terror that happens. Like the bridge, this in New York, some lady gets taken oh. out of her apartment. Oh, and that he's is like, so brutal. He's like, mm, no, and just fucking drops her, dude. Yeah. And she goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> she's just gone. They, they spare you her skull hitting the pavement, but it's. It's wow, but but we all know that if it was a guy on on Skull Island, we would have been like, Pfft. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it's 1933, you know. It's yeah. Can't, can't show a damn phone to a death. There's benevolent sex with them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing I did like about this version too is that the natives eventually realize uh, logic and team up with the crew yeah. to take down Kong. They're like, okay, like let's just take care of this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like let's just not. We had a system in place that's backfiring now. <laughs> we gotta... Um, we get the most violent scene of the movie here. Um, Kong, because it's the scene where these natives are throwing spears at Kong, and they're like going into his flesh, and you're like, oh, okay, maybe they can... No. He comes over, not only does he kill the guys throwing stuff at him, brutally, he, he like crushes them with his feet, he steps on them. Yeah. But he like picks women and, and like... And comes after like women and children, like pulls them out, literally just eats them, and then like throws them. And I was like, not even just goes. He just kind of and yeah. then tosses them. It's like it's oh, like yeah, it's that that, that shot deep. that shot of the guy getting stepped on where he like slowly yeah, he, like, mm. then he gets back up and he's still moving and then he moves towards like his head. It's yeah. Like, oh shit. Yeah. It's it's really intense, and then they eventually gas bomb him, and they bring him to New York and. uh it, the movie isn't. Maybe I didn't pay attention. It's not very clear that a few months have passed. Yeah, sometimes definitely passed. I think like now yeah. Anne and Driscoll are like. They're a, definitely a thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're at the premiere and. Because they're, either married or engaged. But I think they're engaged. No, I think they're engaged. Yeah. Because yeah, because yeah, Carl Dunham is like saved by the very man who's gonna be her husband. Yeah. It's like, so uh, but they imply this thing where they're like, oh yeah, we took the fight out of him. So the off-screen yeah. kind of imply that Vong, Vong that Kong was victimized. Um, yeah. Yep. And the chrome steel doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do well. We get some comedy here, which is nice. We get this lady going, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some sort of a film? And it's like, no, it's a live presentation. She's like, oh, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. I came in for a Compton and picture. Yeah, she's like this. Yeah, it's not some nice picture. It's like, okay, can you please take your seat? <laughs> we get this scene where this lady's like, there's enough apes already in New York when these people are like, excuse me, and they're like pushing past. Yeah, and yeah, some good, some good commentary. Just like that slight is, little, that little was fun stuff. But then yeah, Kong goes on his rampage and because he sees Anne, right? No, it's also it's because of all the, the photos too. Gonna, yeah, because Carl yeah. Denham, fucking yeah. dumbass who films wildlife, is now is like, now we would like to get the the first ever uh, official photos taken of Kong. Come yeah. on out and just yeah. like dozens of reporters. But and she and Jack, and then he's like, yeah. uh, guys, stop, and they're like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, you know, he gets Anne, and we get this, um, ah, it's like the most, one of the most famous scenes of all time. He Absolutely. Takes iconic. her up the Empire State Building, and... and of course, along the way, just drops some people. Kills them. Yeah. 
Yeah, we get some really great superimposed effects of him like outside the window, which mm -hmm. we get the cool like puppet hand that reaches in. And... Yeah, yeah, that was great. Um, I think there's a bit where like Anne and Driscoll are talking, and just Kong just like <laughs> sneaking yeah. into the window. Yeah, it's um, it's very scary, and uh, and there's a cool bit of trivia here, um, which uh, so Ernest, uh, I feel so bad, Schrodecker or whoever, the co-director who ends up directing Son of Kong and Mighty Joe Young. Oh my god. He and Marion C. Cooper are the pilots who shoot Kong to death. Oh, that's, that's great. That's, that's cool. They were like, if anyone's going to kill the bastard, it should be us. That's fair. Yeah. I, I also, um, I liked, there was one one of the shots, I, I forget if it's when they're actually at the top of the Empire State Building or when, mm -hmm. like, one of the times he's on top of a building, but there's a really cool transition between him holding the stop motion doll and he like puts yeah. it down and like obviously there's like some fiddling there yeah. and then it like switches to her live action yeah. there on the mm -hmm. it's like ooh that was, that was it's, it's that budget man yeah, it's that exactly. money and the, and the really interesting thing for me going back to this I don't know how you guys felt about it mm. he takes that one plane but he does not the, he's helpless yes. bro he that, is in a that seems so depressing yeah He's up there. There's nowhere to go. No. And they're just like taking shots at him. Yeah. And he's just slowly dying. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's not it's epic. No. It's no, not, not at all. fun. No. It's just sad. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's like there's like that bit where he slips and he's like there and he's like yeah. her head is at her level and it's like shit. Uh, man, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, this. It's also so cool seeing like how I mean he's big, but like especially for thirty standards, but for today's kaiju standard, right? this no. guy's a fucking shrimp. I yeah, mean, he's, he's uh, 25 feet. Yeah, and that, I mean, that fucking fall. Yeah, like, again, falling. Oh, oh, falling. Oh, he's more not. falling, bro. I, I, you know, something about falling, man, it's just not fun. He's taken out of his jungle. He's brought to our concrete jungle. And it, it, is, it, is, it is very powerful to me that he comes from this demonic island, like the place where you have to be the ultimate survivor. And we bring him to our world, and he just stands no chance. Yeah. yeah. He's just taken out yeah. pretty easily. He takes, you know, he takes out one plane, and that's like, and for a moment you're like, is he gonna, is he gonna like, no, nah. no. Nah. I do like that there are actual scenes building up to them, like getting mm -hmm. the planes together, because you okay. know, casually flying jets through the city is not uh, yeah. as accepted a thing in films as it is now in action yeah. films, where it's like, oh yeah, of course fighter planes come in. Well, to, and we must remember this is, New York. this is pre World War Two. Yeah, you know, uh, so. Uh, it's a, there's a reason it's like one of the most powerful endings of all time. Yeah. Kong falls, and and then, then you know Crocodile yeah. walks up. Yeah, and he's like, maybe it was curiosity that killed the George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and he, he comes up. The you know they're they're talking to him, and he's like, no, it was his beauty killed the beast, and and that it just it just fucking ends. What else do you add? Yeah. You know, well, you add another hour. Well, you had another hour, or you do Son of Kong. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. All right, so before, 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 before we go into Son of Kong, <laughs> which is why we're here today. Yes. I'm very curious. Okay. So, <laughs> let's... You're leading this, Josiah. You, let, yeah. Before we You're go moderating. in depth into it, this came out the same year. This was like six months later. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I will say, Crazy. everything I heard about this movie... Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not necessarily as bad. It's not very good. Being this is the first <laughs> kaiju sequel ever, what I'll say is, ironically, I think it's flipped from the original movie. Thank I, you. I, yes. I think the human stuff is way better conceived yes. than anything on Skull Island. This is what I was going to fucking say. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Uh, this is why I want to talk about this. Because, yes. like, King Kong, I hate the fucking boat shit. Yeah. But then the, the island is amazing. Yeah. With Son of Kong, the boat shit is so fucking good. Yeah. The island stuff is not up to snuff. Because yeah. it was done six months later. I mean, there's not enough time to make it as good. But the human stuff, like the... Yeah. The new girl, like the captain, Hellstrom, um, the little, like, community they're in for a bit... And the, 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 sh the crew mutining because we're like, oh, we're yeah. not going to fucking go onto the Death Island. Yeah. Dude, amazing. Way more of a compelling, like... I agree. Like the opening where it's like Carl Benham's in debt because everyone's suing him for property damage. It's a, it makes so much sense. Oh, my God. Because so, uh, I didn't know who was... If any characters were coming back. Well, of course, we had to bring in the Chinese cook. 
Well, he's the best character. <laughs> but the fact that they were like, okay, we're not going to try to make Jack and Anne force back into this plot. That, that would be stupid. Yeah. However. <laughs> However, it makes sense that Carl Denham, yeah, he's being sued by everyone. He literally has reporters breaking into his apartment. Yeah. Um, but Carl Denham will, and then the crew of the Venture are the recurring characters. And I think that makes way more sense. Absolutely. As like a epilogue sequel thing to King Kong. Yeah. Because Carl Denham technically has more story you could tell with him. Yeah, like Jack and Anne are kind of dumb, but Carl Denham has way more to say. Oh, he has to redeem himself because, I mean, he failed horribly. Yeah. And that's what this whole movie is. He's like trying to redeem what he did. Not just like, like for everything. Like he, like he made so many mistakes in the first movie. Yeah. That are all now coming to fruition in this movie. So it's a good like hour-long dating ma for this character where he's able to just like, yeah. have his like finish his arc get mm-hmm. the girl you know repay everything and yeah it's good Mate. it's good shit what do you think Nathan do you think the human stuff was better in this movie um I will say that my my overall impression of this film I'm so bored um no. I, I, I I did I did love the opening of like oh yeah Carl Denham is Ruined. Yeah. I'm ruined. ruined. I have nothing left um, except Spider Man. And I, and I, I um, Sorry. I, I loved the, um, I loved the, uh, oh, what's his, what, what was his title be? Like the auditor or whoever who's able to sneak in and like do yeah. crazy disguises and shit. That guy was, was like, so fun. That was so fucking funny. And, but, and then it's like, hey, I'm on this boat. Ah, oh, my, my uncle works near here. Yeah. But then, like, yeah. once they get on the boat and it's like, oh, we have to go back to Skull Island. It's like, well, what you do? I'm like, I'm kind of. Well, because there's treasure. Because yeah, there's treasure. So and I'm like, I didn't hear about this in the first. Oh, yeah. right, to, be, to be fair, he doesn't start going there for treasure. That's no. introduced later. But yeah. that Hel- is Hellstrom is the guy who off screen gave Denim the map, which is cool. I do like that. That's cool that's how we're ex- expanding the lore. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, yeah. Like, how did he know about Skull Island? Well, there's this, there's this fucking asshole. <laughs> Yeah. And also, let's let's uh, we get to expand the racism a little bit. We don't just have Chinese chef; we have Swedish sailor. Yeah, and like is <laughs> is in, and I think like a Russian crew. They said for like which why they betray everybody. But yeah, which is why they betray everyone. Yeah, there's like this one guy. I don't. I, I forget if it's Hellstrom or if it's another guy, but he just looks stoned out of his mind because he's playing. I think it's like one of the Russian characters is just like. Isn't it the, the main? He's the head mutant. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. Also, I love that the opening of this movie has like a little like cute like um like '90s sitcom opening of showing all the characters. That's, that was so strange. I was yeah. like, okay, I was like, huh, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. They don't have the players. No. They're like everywhere. We go. Go. Yeah. everywhere. Um, I will say I love Hilda way more as a character than Anne. Hilda See, has such like a like it was Anne like you saw her as a street urchin kind of. She was picking up a fish. Here's what I'll and say. And then you're like, okay, well she's impoverished. But with Anne, like you see her like performing in this stage show and like you see her with yeah. her like her grandpa or whatever and like yeah. you see him die and like she's you see her lose everything she threatens Hellstrom yeah I, I here's what I'll say I think Hilda is way more active on the island yeah which, which helps because yeah. the island is not as good this time around so yeah. the fact that Hilda, it's Hilda and Carl it's like okay this allows the ending to not be bad and they have the bit where they're on the island, island way more in this one they even like stay the night they like shack yeah. up somewhere yeah yeah it's interesting well, again they're on decent terms with the natives even though the natives say like this is all your fault i do love that um yeah they show up in the same chief and he's like get the fuck off my island <laughs> but okay if you're gonna be here whatever yeah <laughs> so here's my big problem is the film is called son of kong right they never well I'll call him Kiko, but they never call him that in the film. Yeah. And yet it's King Kong. Yeah, it's Kiko. Sure. Okay. So the film is called Son of Kong. There's no attempt to, like, make that explicit that he is the Son of Kong. Yeah, not at all. There's no explanation for where he was in the first movie or no. what he's doing. Dude, it's, he's been at that sand trap for, like, it's years. Yeah. It's, it, it's just the very first thing they see this. That was so convenient. Not as yeah. not as big, but still big monkey. And he's like, oh, I didn't know Kong had a little junior. And it's like, oh. I think he's 12 feet. And he yeah, happens to be feet. stuck in the sand trap, and we have to help him. Yeah. So why we came here, right, as he was stuck in the sand trap. Like, mm. Again. 
It's, it's, it sucks because the before boat stuff is so well, or the before island stuff is so well written. Like, Hilda's, like, whole introduction as a character and her joining up felt so organic. It did. Um, Jack's, okay. like, crisis of everything felt so organic. The captain also trying to redeem himself because he's also uh-huh. stuck in all this nonsense. Yeah. Halston's scum, discovery is yeah. so great. And then Nathan Island, it's like, oh, he's just stuck in the fucking tar. It's like, what, really? Now he'll help like, us find like, the treasure. Like, now we'll like... be lazy? Oh. Like, well, we, yeah. we, we were firing on all fucking cylinders and then all of a sudden we're like, and he's stuck in sand. Well, yeah, that's funny because you were saying how hey, you were getting sleepy in the first half of the first movie. But when, and, and to be fair, I had a longer day. But when I was watching Son of Kong, I... I've been trying to get to the point where I can take naps in the middle of the day um, because of my schedule. But I fell asleep in the last 15 minutes of the Skull Island stuff. Me too. And I had to go back like twice to make sure I got everything because I'm like, what happened to Hellstrom? Okay, I got to go back again. Okay, this is what happened to him. After Hellstrom died, I passed out and I woke up to a, a, a tsunami happening. And little baby Kong is stuck in, in, a, in a rock, and he's holding up Carl Denham in this last saving grace. And I was like, oh, I'm like, cool. Like, this is sad, but I don't think you're saying as much with this. No, <laughs> no. It's like, oh, he just befriended Carl, so he's like, well, at least you won't die. Yep. <laughs> did, like, you, oh. did you ever catch a monkey? Lady, you'd be surprised. That was so fucking funny. Jeez. Um... But yeah, it, it was this strange thing of... What happened to the monkey in the first movie? The little monkey on the ship? Iggy? Is a name? Yeah. What happened to him? He just in like one, one shot of the movie. I don't know. I think they spent the budget on... They probably put him with the rest of the animals that Hilda frees when when the tent burns down. I did like that. She frees all the animals. Yeah. So it... Without she's saying it, it, without saying it, it shows that she's going to be able to forge a relationship with mm-hmm. the son of Kong and, yeah. and show Denim how to... Relate to him more, so. Do you guys think that Sam Raimi should do a Son of Kong, like a modern one? I mean, sounds it. Sounds and you just have, like, old Jack Black, and he's just, <laughs> <laughs> when he's been indebted for years, yeah. he's like, oh, I'll, it's like, you know. He's an alcoholic. Yeah. You know? I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Andy Serkis would come back to play a great white ape. And, and, yes. And again, here's, here's my big problem, is the film is called Son of Kong. Yeah. The first film, we get this great parallel between Anne and Kong, yeah. and how they're victimized, and how there's a deeper layer than just Kong wants a bride, basically. Yeah. But in this film, you have this setup of Hilda loses a father. Mm-hmm. Kiko lost his father. Mm-hmm. But because of the way the plots are in, mm-hmm. we have nothing in terms of Kiko, the it's parallel. Like, it's like this had a really strong first, second draft. Right. And then they were filming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly we were on set. <laughs> Yeah. And we're like, oh shit, we have to do the monster stuff now. Yeah. There was a really funny communism joke I also want to bring up when the mutiny happens. Dude. Carl Denham says, and I quote, I oh, know, it must be in Russia. Here come the committee of the workers. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard. Oh, shit. And I love that. And then they get in, you know, Carl and, and Hilda and the captain and Chinese cook are off the boat. And I love that, that, that Charlie just volunteers to leave. The other part that was great was Hellstrom tries to become yes, captain. Yes. And the crew literally he, says, You think we got rid of a good captain so we can have a bad captain? Oh my god, that was so. I like how they acknowledge the old captain was good. Yeah. Yeah. But they just don't want to go to the Skull Island. But why would we take you? You're like. You're trash. The, the 1933 equivalent of a meth addict. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't want you. Your name's Hellstrom. <laughs> Get the fuck off the boat. Oh, man. And they don't even give him a rap. They just throw him. No, they just throw him. Yeah. There's this bit that I, I do think the best um, homage scene. The one, my favorite part of Skull Island was that when Kiko kills the Brontosaurus, he checks the jaw. Like, Kong checks the jaw of the Allosaurus. Mm-hmm. And then it comes back alive and bites him. And he's like, you bitch. And then kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have left you live. That was well, pretty uh, great. Do you, do you guys think that, um, when they were, uh, you know, in the scene where they were looking for the treasure and they found like, the little the den or whatever, mm-hmm. I was waiting for them to find uh, Kong's um, axe that's in the... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. And then we go um, into the inside of the, of the planet and go to the upside the down. The Earth. Earth, 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 yeah. We'll get there. A long so way I from. was kind of upset they didn't like, introduce that in this movie, but it's okay. Here's another huge problem. That's for grandson of Kong. Here's another huge pro- grandson of Kong. Yeah. That's the same right now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the big problem with this film. It's not... The, the first part is great. I like all the stuff before. Skull Island is weaker 
But it's the fact that maybe I missed something. The island just starts collapsing. Uh, yeah, yeah, what happened there? Why, why, why did it start collapsing? It, just, it was maybe Indiana Jones trap, where it's like, if you remove the treasure, we'll blow up the whole island. You know what? They did set up You're the, not wrong. They did set up the ancient civilization, if they had played that up more. Yeah. But the natives say, like, don't, don't remove the... Pardon me. Don't remove the treasure or you'll doom us all. Yeah. But the island I mean, just collapses so Kiko can sacrifice himself. And... Do you need to explain this in Dial Destiny? I would really prefer it to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, so this whole climax is just completely contrived. and Yeah, again, it's like, the again, that, that first... It sucks because everything before Skull Island was so well written. And even early Skull Island stuff, excluding the sand trap, yeah. was interesting. It was, yeah. Like Hilda, like, like trying to befriend Baby Kong, and Carl trying to like make amends by not killing and enslaving <laughs> his son. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, after Hellstrom dies, it's just kind of like... Yeah, it's just them, you know, <laughs> Metroid running from the exploding yeah. level. Yeah. And, but we get a nice little ending with, yeah. you know... Um, I, the weird thing is that, okay, so I'm, I like Good for them. Denim and Hilda being together at the end. Like, sure. I think the romance is... Well, they're both like headstrong, mm-hmm. like like strong personality. Do mm-hmm. they didn't get the stuff done, people? But, yeah. but my problem is, is that unlike the first film, which has Denim like mourning the loss of Kong, he doesn't say anything about Kiko at the end. No, he doesn't say like, well, you know, uh, he doesn't say anything like, you know, maybe I was like profound. Yeah, it doesn't say anything profound about it, so it makes Kiko's sacrifice less. Eh, fuck him. I wish, I wish yeah. he, he should have said it was Beauty Killed the Beast again, so he can just, like, fillet himself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this time it was... <laughs> it was youth that killed the beast. It was youth that killed the beast. Oh, it was, it was rocks that killed the beast. Yeah. yeah. So some I, con- If you think about yeah. it, like, Kiko would have died anyway in the sand trap, and then he got... Mm-hmm. Then he died and stuck in the rocks. New lease on life. Yeah, yeah. see? You have to beat up one more dinosaur. Yeah, he, and then be that dinosaur again. He fights a bear. Yeah. He fight, yeah. I, I like how he takes. That was one part of the early Skull Island when he takes the log and just beats the bear until it runs away. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Oh, shit. I, I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. He also, like, headlocks him and punches him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean. The Son of Kong is, like, half a good movie. Yeah, it's really strange. Like, well, that, it's half a great movie, I'd say. I mean, early stuff, like. I don't know. I loved everything before. I was I was like shocked that I was enjoying a Son of Kong for the first like thirty minutes. It was very interesting. Yeah, it was it was the opposite of what I expected. I was going and going like, I expect this to be very contrived, but at least we'll get some cool stuff on Skull Island. And yeah. I came away with the reverse opinion of, oh, this is like <laughs> everything made a lot of sense until we got to Skull Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so not a, not a bad not a, not first, a, a uh, bad foray. start yeah. mm-hmm. to what it will become the kaiju um, revolution, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but definitely like uh, just just forcing out a sequel is very is very interesting, and of course there'll be so many more sequels as we go along. I mean this whole discussion is sequels, but but yeah. a lot of not sequels yeah. kind of like. Tangential films that get roped in later. Or, it's true. Yeah, it's or, true. Or, but yes, you are correct. Is that the 1933 Kong only has the one sequel and then done. Yeah. And they wouldn't make one for it's a good, 30 years. It's now. honestly a pretty good bookend to the character. You can almost like tie it into make it one big movie in oh, a yeah. way. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. You could, it's short it's, enough. It's two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's shorter than... It's shorter than Jackson's and it's two films. Oh, shit. You're right. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, kind of, kind of pleasantly surprised. It was, it was a real, real nice to go back to the start of this whole craze. Would you rec- So obviously everyone should watch King Kong. But would you recommend Son of Kong? I would. I mean, just because. It, here, well, here's what I say: If you hate the original King Kong, probably not. But yeah, if you really like the original Kong, maybe like. Don't discount it just because it's a sequel. You yeah, might, don't discount you it because it's, it's called Son of Kong. It was made in like six months. I think it's only an hour long. It's it's got enough substance there, and it's the reason why I. That's the reason why I'm. Uh, we're gonna watch the creative teams next. Weird. It's it's kind of a weird pseudo trilogy, but yeah. King Kong, Son of Kong, and then Mighty Joe Young, 
which I haven't seen the original. So yeah, I haven't seen. I've only seen the '90s version, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. early 2000s, whenever it came out. So it's a, good, a good start to kaiju. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And next time we will discuss Mighty Joe Young, which was in 1947, and then The Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms, which came out in '53, a year before. God, so like that. <laughs> okay, when you did that joke with the, with the, the searching, I was fucking crying. Yeah. I was laughing so hard. That's the thing. It transcends language. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious, dude. Transubstantiation. Yeah. Any closing thoughts? Man, um, Nathan, when do you want to start watching <laughs> Ultraman together? <laughs> Did you see that a certain time marathon? Um, <laughs> we're gonna cut this. <laughs> um, uh, spit take. Hmm? Um, eventually. Yeah. Uh, if 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 I do, I, I I've, I've kind of I've kind of thought back. Oh, wow, you fucker! I'm sorry. No, it's, I'm already. He agreed to Super Sentai. Well, that's great. I uh, I agreed to Kaiju. So. Yeah, and he already did it. I already uh, did. He already did the majority. Well. There's a lot of new things in there that are gonna. Yeah. I know, but I'm not enriched they for get, experiencing them. They, well, you don't know that. They're gonna make your full skin nice and crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, see, that's what it's happening. <laughs> Oh shit! I'm you're, so, you're right. I'm so sorry for everyone who stuck around this long. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just kind of wanted to be like, hit the end credits and then just, my life is not enriched. <laughs> Folks get nice and crispy and just cuts. <laughs> Okay. Alright, I think that's, that's right. pretty good. Let's go. Uh, shuttle cast, not okay. the escape pod. Do I, do I just stop? Uh, yes. hit, so hit 